Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a furled midge. We got a glimpse of this fly when I was doing the surface film midge. It was one of the ways I created the extended body. And I found it in my fly box, um, kind of hiding, tucked away in there. And it is a pattern that I caught a few fish on, so I thought I'd share it as well. We're going to do it on a TMC 206 barbless in size 20. And for those who are always asking, you know, what can I get at the craft store? What can I use for this? I found a couple of uses for the metallic threads that you find in Michaels and Joann's and such. And um, I use it for this fly as well, and, and sometimes in different colors. We're going to use a little bit of super fine dubbing and some gray floating uh, polypropylene yarn for the wing. So let's get a hook in the vise. Um, this a little, it's kind of turned up slightly, but it's almost a straight eye hook. Uh, I kind of like that when you're working with these tiny hooks and trying to tie on midges. More for on the stream than in the vise. So we'll get some A dot black thread started. It's just black uni thread. And zoom in here and see if we can get a better look at things. So here's one of the um, techniques. So that's a piece of that... Uh, Coats and Clark thread. It's it's not on the spool or in the bobbin. And what I'm going to do is dub it, twist it using the uh, hackle pliers and, and a shepherd's hook, and then fold it in half and furl it. So we'll get a little bit of that. In this case, we'll use olive. It's, it's intended to be a small olive uh, dry fly or a merger. But you could mix and match. You could make larger or smaller um, patterns for versions of this fly. And they would imitate uh, probably any number of mayflies. So we're going to spin that up. Get rid of the hook and fold it in half and then let it furl. And you'll get a feel for how much to spin it. It starts to, to want to twist up on its own. So here's the trick, right? So I... I held one end of the thread in the vise and um, did the dubbing and furled it, but then I I take it loose, unwrap it, and take it loose so that I can measure the body and tie it in where I want it. So I'll give our thread a spin here to make sure it jumps back. I get it caught on a rough point on the finger a couple of times, but eventually we get it tied in place. And it, you know, you're on your own here. You can make it a little longer, a little shorter. It's up to you. Um, in this case, it might be a little longer than I, I might have liked, but seeing it in the video, seeing it live, uh, that didn't occur to me. So we'll zoom in. For the uh, the body, you could use dubbing. Again, you could mix and match here. Um, I think this makes a nice fly if you use a strand of peacock. And I'm going to use one of the little um, tricks, the other tricks that I've shown recently is to add a piece of thread to twist with the peacock curl to kind of make a chenille and and strengthen that that peacock curl so a couple of whips to hold things in place we're not quite ready to do the the body yet i'm going to add in the wing first so there, there's a couple different ways to tie and that's about a third of a strand of that poly on this size 20. Um, I'm going to try and crisscross that here, probably making that look harder than it has to be. It moved around a little bit on me, but I got it where I wanted it. Um, folded it up, pulled it tight, and we're going to post it anyways. Um, probably make a spinner out of this fly just by crisscrossing another time or two. And leaving the wings spray out, or splay out, but... Um, I'm going to put about three posting wraps on there and then lock that in place. All right, so we like where that is. And let's get on with the... Uh, I'm going to use the rotary feature, so we, we brought over the uh, dubbing cradle. Bobbin cradle, I'm sorry. Misspeaking all over the place this morning. And I'm using the hackle pliers. I didn't capture it on film, but I cut that thread loop to make it a single strand. I'm going to capture both the uh, the thread and the peacock. So a little trick here, uh, pull the thread tight so that you don't pull the peacock loose and during the wrapping process. And then this is another place where you get a little feel for it. Um, 
I've still had the peacock come loose on the end toward the hook here and have to kind of back up and start over. In this case, I gave it a few wraps uh, or a few twists and then we'll give it a couple of wraps. And then you can see the uh, peacock up above wasn't fully fur or twisted, so um, didn't look like good chenille. So we'll twist it a little more and give it another wrap or two. And I held my finger in the place so you couldn't see everything. <laughs> Not exactly what the plan was there. So we'll get a wrap or two to hold that down. And then we'll trim off the excess thread and peacock curl. That was about three cups of coffee in, so um, please excuse the shakiness this morning. And then we have plenty of room to wrap back over and make sure that hurl and the thread are locked in place. And come in with our whip finish four or five turns. And kind of snip off the thread there and uh, these wings, they kind of at some point, I don't know, I imagine them being held up like the like a sail on a boat at this point. And I want to give this a little angle, a little puffiness so I can see it as well. And then a uh, little dab of head cement to kind of keep things in place. And that's the fly. Now, if you want to do a bunch of those bodies, you could do them probably on a needle ahead of time and uh, mass produce these. So thanks for hanging in there and watching, and I uh, hope this helps you out. I hope you catch a lot of fish with it. And until next time, if you want to learn more about me, uh, look me up on Amazon. Until next time, be safe.